Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for another episode of Cranked and Ranked with your old pal. I was about to call myself Eddie Sparks. What? No. I'm old, old head. head. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> for this episode, we're going to switch places and I'm going to do an awful accent that sounds kind of like Eddie's. I'm not even going to try. That would be a nightmare. Hello, mate. I'm British. Let's go to the <laughs> chippy, innit? <laughs> you got a bottle of water? <laughs> <laughs> Don't get me started on that. <laughs> I will I will avoid every possible tea from here on in. <laughs> um, you dirty fucker. You bloody rotter. <laughs> what a fucking rotter. That's um, the one. Yeah, there he is. <laughs> um that's appropriate for today because we are going to be ranking a band from your neck of the woods, yes. England. Yes. Um yep. oh yeah, Britland. so yeah. I, I, fu- I fudge that intro as I do sometimes, but normally I introduce myself. Old head with me as always, Eddie Sparks. That's me. And um, hi. What's up? <laughs> um, today we're ranking another band. Actually, the last band ranking of 2022. Yes. Because uh, we got one more show for you guys before the end of the year. And then we take a little Christmas break. Yeah, and uh, then we come back full steam ahead with some more shit. But uh, we're gonna wrap it up with a pretty fun one and a uh, one of my favorites, really, actually my favorite UK thrash band, and that would be Acid Rain, and um, also to me a very underappreciated band. Yes, and in many respects misunderstood. I feel. Or people make assumptions about yeah. the band, and it's we'll get into that. But uh, and, and a band that that like has been one of my favorites for a little while, but also became more of a special part of my life because I also do a show called Old Bollocks with the lead vocalist of Acid Rain, Howard H. Smith, and so that's one of those instances where I, I kind of lucked out doing my channel and shit because. I eventually got to do a show with the front man of one of my favorite bands. And I'm just like, well, shit, you know, it's like, you know, I I may not be making the money yet, but uh, (laughs) there's some sort of reward happening, but um, exposure. Yeah. I'm (laughs) going to take a coffee drink. He's taking a coffee drink. It's very important. Um, Yes. Gives me, gives me a little boost. So I'm, because I'm I'm already excited to do this ranking and we're only ranking four albums. Because they only really, well, one mini album and three actual albums. One of them is yeah. considered a mini album, but it's long enough by some standards to actually just be an album anyway. And Yeah, um, yeah I, was, I was just going to say, like, what, what is the, what's the cutoff between, like, an EP and a mini album? Or are they just the same thing? I think it just depends on how the record label and the band want to promote it. Because yeah, technically, an album... I think at that point it has to be a certain amount of songs and over a certain amount of time from yeah. what I've, from what I know. And so you could have an album with, you know, like a grindcore album that's got 30 tracks, but it's only 10 minutes long and you could call that an yeah. album or you could call. <laughs> yeah. and that's that three was, songs. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or you have like sleep who have an entire album. That's just one track. And yeah. you know, so it, who knows, but I think at some point, I guess, the band or the label felt that the album wasn't long enough to be called an actual album. And so it's referred to as a mini album, but yeah. it still has the word album in it. Who the fuck cares? But anyway, we're ranking all four of those releases. And yes. as usual, uh, we talk about where the band came into our lives. This is a different story for me than a lot of bands because in the U S in the you know around the time that I was really listening to music, starting to listen to music, late eighties, early nineties, and and so on, I don't remember the name Acid Rain ever coming up anywhere, like not 
I don't never saw an album, never saw a poster, never saw an ad, never saw them in a magazine. It, I mean, they may may have been in some American publication that I just didn't see, but they were a band that I literally I did not even know that they existed. But on the same token, you could say the same thing about Zentrix and other uh, UK thrash bands. They just did not get promoted over here for mm. some reason, which is ridiculous. But it took the Internet for me to discover Acid Rain and specifically YouTube. So... Hmm. This was this would have been fuck like, ten years ago maybe, but yeah wow, maybe wow. maybe m- maybe a little more than ten years ago. YouTube was just had just gotten to that point where it was it, it was big, and people knew about YouTube, and so a lot of people were like posting shit already. Yeah. There wasn't the the idea of the YouTuber didn't exist yet, but there were a lot of people out there that would do random shit like. Here's a, a 30 minute video about underrated thrash bands. And it would just play like a clip of a song with a really weird fade out and then a weird yeah. pic- pixelated picture of the band. It was just, <laughs> and for some reason, like I just, I loved watching those because like there, it would be a lot of shit that I love, but then there'd be, there would always be random bands that I'd be like, oh, I don't, yeah. I don't know that band. And then I got turned on to a whole lot of thrash through these random YouTube guys that did these compilation albums. And so, uh, one of them had a song from the fear on there. And I'm like, I don't know. I've never heard this before. Wow. And so I very quickly went to my, my illegal downloading uh, software <laughs> <laughs> and then downloaded all their out. Cause at that point, like, how do you get them? How the fuck do you get them? So yeah. I, uh, so I went and illegally downloaded all of their shit. <laughs> and started listening to it, and I remember, like, I I, I love that style, that that era of thrash, and I love the kind of riffs that they do, which we'll get into. Uh, but and here, and here's something you know, I've been doing, I've been doing a show with with Howard H. Smith for you know year, almost a year and a half, I think, or something like that. Hmm. And we've been talking for a little bit longer than that, but this is something that I've never mentioned to him because I don't know if he will take this as an insult or a compliment. But <laughs> the uh, and I know he's I know he might be watching, so you know, brace yourself. But um, I remember when I first was listening to them, I'm like, this is like really great thrash metal. If Phil Lewis from L.A. Guns was the vocalist. <laughs> because they have really similar voices like he doesn't sing like phil lewis but huh. they seem like they have a similar accent and a similar timbre to their voices and it's hmm. like if, if phil lewis just like shouted and kind of you know saying you know more aggressively over thrash metal i was just like ah and i, I was I, I you know i love la guns and and phil lewis as a singer so i i was just that was the thing that like drew me to them because i'm just like <laughs> That's an interesting yeah. sound. Now, now I don't even think of it anymore because it's fucking Howard. And I know, I mean, I, I've gotten so used to his voice. It doesn't really have the same connection to me anymore. But at the time, like, that's what I, that's the thing that I knew. I knew Phil Lewis's voice. And so that led me into like, you know, being, oh, I, 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 I like his delivery with this, with this band. And then I got really into all of their shit. And I feel like it was almost not even a couple years after that that they announced the the reboot of acid rain i'm like well that's that's convenient <laughs> <laughs> and then the rest you know the rest is history with them doing the other shit and then me you know becoming friends with with h through my youtube channel but uh for you i feel like this is a band that you up until recently didn't know a whole lot about i i came online with acid rain um pretty much through you and i was Mm -hmm. just kind of like you know uh eventually when you when you started doing um old bollocks with howard h smith i just thought i I gotta gotta check this out (laughs) holy shit it was like it was one of those things where i heard moshkinstein i kind of went um chronologically yeah Um, i heard moshkinstein i thought that's pretty pretty wild pretty wild like kind of uh crazy 80s thrash and then I heard the fear, and it was like, oh, oh, they they tighten up here a little bit, and not to not to give too much away about my ranking, but the one that won me over was obnoxious because I was like, oh, oh, yeah, like there's a pretty clear um, 
trajectory that mm -hmm. as they progressed, yeah. where it just got more and more, um, like they got they got tighter, but they broadened at the same time. You know. Yep. Absolutely. So, um, but yeah, it, it was definitely through this. Um, you know what what we have. Yeah. Yeah. Well, on um, this and, show. So that and that's and that's great because because that's. Because I did, you know, right after I started doing YouTube stuff, which was almost, fuck, almost four years ago, I think. Yeah. Did I did I start in 2018? I think it was right at the start of 2019, 20... was it? I... You're right. I think it was right at this. Well, no, because. Uh, was it? Hang on. Hold up. Research I... on the fly. I'm I'm sorry, guys. Are you? Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> It's been a know. long time because I, because the year, because there, I, 2019 is like pandemic starting or is that 2020 when it, when it got 20, 2020 was the start really. So yeah, 2019, the beginning of 2019 would have been when I started the old head podcast. And then within a few months I was doing YouTube videos and then very quickly I started a series called bands. You should know. Yeah, and I did one on Acid Rain, and I I watched it last night for the first time, and my, it's awful. Like, uh, <laughs> like I'm glad I did it because I'm all about getting the the word out for Acid Rain. But that was the that was the initial reason why I started talking to Howard was because he saw that video, and now I go back and look, and I'm like, man, why did he ever? Even, I just it just <laughs> does, I don't know. Maybe it seems good to other people, but like comparatively speaking to what I do now, I'm just like, man, I was. I was awful, but you know, I, I keep it, I keep it up just because it's the history yeah. of my channel at this point. But a anyone who does this stuff for any, for any length of time, you go back and watch one of your earliest things and you think to yourself, Oh, I could do that so much better now. Or, or, what? you know, yeah. it, and you know, it, I do get the idea of, you know, all the times I've slagged off bands for like re-recording their own material. It's like, I do get it. Like if you if you hear something and you're like I can do it better I can do it better I promise I can do this around but it's 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 out there now you know yeah no, yeah no one else cares it's like just just do a new one and like do a new thing entirely and Move have on. it have it hit harder you know but yeah um, yeah I yeah. yeah that's absolute it's absolutely true I just I just feel like like the one of one of my most popular videos is my Metallica ranking that I did three years ago. And I'm just like, oh, it's not really that good. But yet all these people keep going and commenting yeah. on it. I'm just like, okay, whatever, fine. Hey, look, Let's... it's got the words Metallica and ranking in it. Yeah, so, you're right. Yeah. You're right. <laughs> Algorithm. Well, yeah. <laughs> anyway, so uh, yeah. So what, where were we? Where, yeah, we're, I don't remember where we were, but we're going to go back onto the, the highway for yeah. uh, Acid Rain ranking. Shit, there's ice. <laughs> <laughs> Back off. <laughs> um, or or uh, Acid Ranked. Oh, as we Acid can, Ranked. Uh, yeah, we can call it that today. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, so we're doing their four main major releases, which, you know, three of them back late 80s, early 90s, well, 1990. But um, and then yeah. also their uh, most recent album after the rebooted version of acid rain and who are still going strong behind me i have all my 12 inch acid rain stuff which, that's you know, impressive yeah yeah which we're we're only, we're only talking about three of these that are up here but you know <laughs> or four one two four, three four yeah. oh they're all there they're all there plus hang on the telephone and the worst of acid rain <laughs> which is actually but which is good i'll mention probably that probably because it's got stuff that was demoed for what they would have done after obnoxious which oh. is pretty which is pretty interesting but we'll nice. get there we'll have these conversations because this is a band that um I, I feel like i know a good amount about and um i've listened to a lot and um so it's literally going to be me ranking four albums that i think are fucking great and just had to put them in an order that made some kind of sense for me so agree yeah let's get let's get going with this as usual i throw it over to eddie sparks to start us off so what is your number four acid rain album Okay, so my number four Acid Rain album is Moshkenstein. Same here. Okay, are cool. we gonna have? I, I, I don't. Are we gonna have a match up again? Let's find out. I'll, I feel like it could <laughs> well end up that way. Yeah. Um, so you know, for me, 
the the only real critique I have of this release is the kind of slightly flubby guitar tone. Aside from that, it, everything else on it just fucking rips. Even I, the, I love the playing. It's funny like, that you bring that up because every time I listen to that album, it gets to a point where the first couple songs sound good. And then all of a sudden I'm like, did they not tune the guitars and just continue recording songs? Because the guitars <laughs> go slightly out of tune. And I'm just like, did they not hear that? <laughs> It, 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 in a way it's also kind of like it, it gives it its own charm like on on the other side of the coin because it's like yeah i mean goddess is a is a banging opener it's got furious thrashing goodness going on oh yeah oh yeah but and the playing is fantastic it's just like that the production is so um wildly like you, you wouldn't intentionally produce something this way but it sounds like nothing else it, it almost sounds like it could go off the rails at any moment yeah which yeah. is which is kind of fun which is interesting though because this is actually a re-recording of their demo that has the same name yes but it's not all the same songs i think it's like three or four of the same tracks but yeah. uh but the demo it has a has a very demo-y quality to it and then this one is an improvement but it's it's not they're without still, its still... it's not without its flaws for sure yeah yeah like from, from the, the from the very opening every, the kind of onomatopoeia i'd give the guitar to is <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah like it, again like i say it's 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 played fantastically well excellent yeah. song it, it, production is the only thing that sent this to the bottom and and kind of length as well because it has less songs on it yeah um and it's EP, um, God, but suspended sentence. I love an evil intro with chugging triplets. Mm -hmm. um, there's a badass swagger to this song. Uh, Freedom of speech is a really cool instrumental track. Really it's, clever name. It's yeah, just free, a clever name. <laughs> Freedom of speech with no lyrics. How yeah. clever? <laughs> yeah, it's it's like. But the 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 thing that stood out to me on this one is like I particularly enjoy the really vibey bit at the end with that kind of sparkly mysterious clean guitar mm. call and response with like the evil distorted ones like <laughs> you know i love that yeah yeah i'm really i'm really excited about this stuff because i've just recently dove in and i'm hearing it all again and it's like ah, fucking yeah. love it um motherly love best song about mommy issues i've ever heard <laughs> it's a cra cra crowd pleaser yes they, they still play it today and and, and ba about it's about psycho if you couldn't tell yeah yeah but it's it's yeah just jo jokes aside it's fucking awesome the the evil horror organ in the middle is just the stuff of dreams to my ears like when i heard this song the first time around i was like oh this is it's fucking awesome and then that happens and i got total chills i was yeah. like damn like it, it, to, to me like a, a lot i know a lot of people would be like huh that's kind of a dated sounding synth patch and i'm like no it's got like a classic 80s horror vibe man. well it is it is 1988 also so yeah ex exactly. <laughs> i think it may have yeah. actually been recorded in 87 i think and released in 88 yeah because like it, that's the thing you know i've i've noticed is that you know some some people cannot switch off their you know modern recording brains whereas yeah. i'm like i'm like take it for the time it came out it's a time and a place you know um yeah i i mean there there's something about the aesthetic of how something sounded at the time especially like an album like this is one of those ones that I love hearing it on vinyl. Cause I just like the, the older type of format with the older sound quality. Yeah. So, sometimes it's it, I, like, I, I very recently, there's a, a, a record label that does these sort of fancy, cool reissues of stuff. And they reissued the, uh, actual incidental music from Beverly Hills cop, like not the pop songs, but the, synthesizer wow. songs a nice. soundtrack and they put it out on cassette and i bought a cassette of it and yeah like the 
quality of a cassette's never very good. But for some reason, that particular soundtrack playing on cassette in my room, just like this is exactly how it was supposed to be played. Yeah, it sounds yeah. perfect. And th that that's the thing. It's like pe people turn around and, and they can say, uh, you know, th th the old heads who complain about you know, it's like it's like it's like you the, the old heads that complain about the fucking uh you know compression on like modern metal don't understand that the reason they like vinyl is because of the type of compression on it. But on the flip side of that, I'm like, with that, you know, the the time period that this came out in, sometimes the optimum way to enjoy something is how it arrived at the time you know I, that like, is 100 that's how i feel every time even the shittiest know? sounding album like i like i don't like the production on so far so good so what by megadeth but mm. i don't want to listen to that album any other way than as it sounded when it came out because that's part of the character of that particular album so anytime anyone says anything about a remaster i'm like if i can avoid it i'm going to avoid a remaster they're unnecessary and most of the time, not an improvement in my opinion, but that's that's a rant that I've been having for years. Yeah, and like for, for me, I I have a, you know, because I have an incessant need to bring this up every time. Uh, I, t I tweeted this out actually. It's like, it's, I don't go on Twitter very often, but when I have a little thought that I think is funny, I shard it onto there. Mm -hmm. And uh, what, what was it I put on there? It's like playing GTA San Andreas on a PS2 is like listening to music on vinyl. It just hits different. It, yeah. It ha no other version has the orange haze like atmosphere going on as intense as it does on that version. And yeah. I, there's a part of me that like whenever I play any other version of that game, I'm like, this kicks ass, best game of all time. When I play it that way, I feel like I'm nine again. Yeah, and it's and it's like this intense wave of, oh, I'm back in 2007 without a fucking care in the world. You yeah, know? that's and how I feel about like the original Nintendo. Like I I would like to play some of those games again. And now they 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 have like simulators or they have one where all the games are already programmed on it. And I'm like, no, I want to I want to like have to blow on the cartridge yeah, and then yeah. put it in and push it down and then play the game that way. I just. So, I mean, one day I'll, I'll, I'll get that, but like, that's, that's the sort of thing that like, I know it, it makes little difference, but to me, it, it really, it feels totally different. It's subtle, but it makes a hell of a difference. Mm -hmm. Like, at least to me, you know, we, we are, we're of a higher, higher state of being. We, you know, we get the vibe. We're in the vibe zone. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I'm, I feel like I'm usually in the vibe zone. We're Which, in the vibe it, zone. And we were this is this was all veering off of keyboards on yes. or synthesizer on Motherly Love, which Motherly Love is like their almost like their seek and destroy at this point. Where yes. I feel like every performance I've seen of them, they've played that, and that's like the crowd participation part at the end of the song. So I mean, I mean it's at least you, it, like, they got one of those songs. Like a lot of bands don't have that song that everyone likes to participate in, but um and I've never seen them live. And I probably never will because bands getting over to the U.S. from the U.K. <laughs> it doesn't it doesn't seem like a thing for smaller bands uh, to 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 accomplish. It, it it's, it's it's a little a bit depressing. Yeah. That's why at this point, when bands from overseas, like you know, when I went to go see Carcass, I'm like, well, shit, they made it over yeah. here. I'm gonna I'm gonna go see them. But Carcass is obviously a bigger band than Acid Rain. But you know, still that being said take the opportunity man hell yeah so for, for those of you you know out there whenever a band from overseas that you want to see comes to town don't even uh don't even take a second to think about it just buy your don't even ticket think. because they work in that day fuck it you're sick yeah you, know? yeah, you call in but just you know yeah because they made they made the trek over there and it is not cheap it is not cheap anymore at all and no. so anyway where were we yeah we were halfway it, it, through moshkenstein i think uh yeah so you get respect respect the dead I, f I hear like a little hardcore influence going on in this one mm -hmm. and uh <clears throat> pardon me james hetfield moment uh <laughs> <laughs> and uh <laughs> and this this last one uh chaos lambs to the slaughter is uh one last intense blasting thrash banger 
Yeah. Um, all in all, really good EP. Uh, but it's an EP with the uh, worst Sonic qualities. So, it, unfortunately, it, it has received the bottom spot. Yeah. Um, same o- for me. Over to you. Yeah, I, I like that it's really raw. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, I do think that even though there are, you know, a couple songs, um, Goddess and, and Motherly Love, for sure, that seem to be a couple of their most loved songs. I just think that the big issue with this album is that they topped themselves in all respects after this. There's there. It's clear. It's not. It's yeah. absolutely clear that they completely topped this. And this is the so the so th- so obviously this is like the OG lineup, which the lineup of the band, I believe, changed every release in the early days, except for Howard, Kev on guitar and Ramsey on drums. Mm. But the guitar player who's on here, uh, Gaz, actually went on to form the band Cathedral with uh lee dorian and then eventually ramsey the drummer of acid rain joined as the drummer of cathedral <laughs> so <laughs> those are they're very related bands one day we'll talk about cathedral but uh but yeah uh, um h kevin ramsey are like the the sort of factor that ties everything together for these early albums and um but that's why that's why like they i the you know, I'll talk about it when we talk about their newer album, but there's a specific thing about these th- grouping of the three first albums that have like a slight, there's a different sort of odd experimental quality to them. And yeah. because Moshkenstein to me, it sounds like like a really ambitious, promising band that's almost there. Like they've, yeah, they've kind of figured out what they're doing they've just got like one, like another step to go to, to get there. And in, to me, production. <laughs> well, that too, that yeah, too. Yeah. But I think even, even in the songs and performances, I think that they, they, they didn't, they had an extra step they needed to go. And it just so happens that they took a really big step really quickly. But yes. uh, so, so Moshkenstein, like honestly, out of all of their stuff is the, is the one I, I listen to the least, even though I do really enjoy it. Because I, I, you know, it's one of those things. Like if there's so many albums to choose from, and if I'm thinking Acid Rain, you know, there's there's albums you go to all the time. But Moshkenstein yeah. is definitely a really cool sort of snapshot of that. You know, the you know, 1987, 88 thrash metal shit that was going on, Hell especially yeah. especially in the UK, because it's you know, it's that's a, that's a thing that I don't. Re- really it, it seems interesting to me because you know you have these bands the big uk thrash bands yeah doing this style of music that clearly started in america mm-hmm. and whenever i think of that there's that part of me that goes oh that's really interesting but i'm all like well shit all of our fucking rock and roll was stolen from england anyway. yeah. <laughs> so it's like so if I'm, all, I'm all like, all right, it makes sense because, you know, every we've just been stealing from, you know, I think Americans are, are more uh, at fault for stealing shit. You know, we ended up because <laughs> it's like it's really interesting. We think about it like we stole, you know, from old blues players to create what would have been rock and roll. Yeah. Uh, but but really, I think the 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 whatever you call it, the the i don't know the infant stages of rock and roll over here in england they took that and said oh we're actually going to do this but good yeah. and then and then the americans were like no wait we'll have that back yeah <laughs> <laughs> so it's just oh, this man. thing of like everybody's stealing from everybody and then so it won't it, it, it's at a certain point it just becomes like a huge muddy mess of of influences where it's like well where did this start who the fuck cares but hey, uh you ain't gonna tell us twice about stealing <laughs> shit, fucking hell, <laughs> history books. <laughs> but yeah. Anyway, anyway, yeah, um, yeah. That's that. I I always wish that I was not only old enough to be into the thrash metal stuff when it was happening, but I really wish that I could be like a fly on the wall with those uh, UK hey, thrash man. bands. At least you got grunge. 
Do you know what I got? Emo. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. You did. I'm. I'm. Yeah, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I respect I, all genres. That, you know, you bring that up, and it's a good point because sometimes I do feel like, oh man, I was born in the wrong country at the wrong time. I wish that I could have been like a teenager in the '80s in the UK. But then I think about it, and I go, no, I think the shit I experienced over here formed like my what the old head that everybody now knows. And I, yeah. you know, I, I feel like I'm happy with that, I guess. I don't know. The, anyway, to be honest, the, the things I'd give for a time machine to go see <laughs> all of my fucking favorite bands at their peak. Like that's, that's the one thing I could legitimately turn around and say about like, you know, people say, Oh, the whole born in the wrong generation thing is such bullshit. It's like, okay, I want to see Lane Staley live. Can't have that. Yeah. Fuck you. You know, it's like, yeah, yeah. It's a, it, it's unfortunate. The passage of time is a is a cruel, cruel, unforgiving thing. Do you think that's the thing? Do you think that there are going to be people that twenty years from now are going to be talking about? Man, I wish I could go back to twenty twenty two. Nobody's going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's going to fucking say that. Do you know what I really miss? The pandemic. <laughs> oh. Yeah, this does this does not seem this seems like a period of history that once we're like a hundred years down the line and there and you know if everything's still going and there's still schools and textbooks, it, they're just going to skip over this point. Yeah, I'm <laughs> sick like, of living in a GCSE history question, man. Like, <laughs> can we just have a year of nothing, please? <laughs> Maybe we'll get that next year. I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, let's let let's hop, let's hop back on board because um, our our joint number four was Moshkenstein. Cool. Uh, if anyone out there is placing bets to see if we're going to match up all the way, let's find out. Go ahead and place your bets, and let's find out what Eddie's number three Acid Rain album is. Okay, so my number three Acid Rain album is 2019's "The Age of Entitlement." Okay, nope, nope. Go ahead and oh. uh, Ooh, strike strike that off the list. That's not my number three. A lot of people just lost some money. <laughs> Bad time of year. <laughs> sorry, sorry, guys. Should you should have bet on a horse? <laughs> um, this is awesome, excellent comeback album. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm just gonna jump straight in. Uh, so we're we're on our second album. We're gonna talk about here, and already we're in bronze metal ter territory. So, uh, let's fucking go. It's higher for you, clearly. So let's, yep. uh, yeah. Yep. So T A O E stands, stands for the age of entitlement. In case, in case you guys didn't know that. Oh, is that is that it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. F funny. A lot of people think it goes tally, but it actually it's just yeah. age of entitlement. <laughs> That's a weird name for a song. <laughs> um, it's a cool opening track. Uh, but you know, it's kind of ushers in. You know, holy shit, new acid rain, fucking cool. Uh, and then you get the new low. There's actually like, they've done a cool thing with this song, and I don't know if it was intentional or not, but I hear like echoes of Goddess on this opening track, like just the tried and true method of opening your album with just a yeah. ferocious ripper. Yeah. I believe it's uh, the same note that starts both songs with the chugging. It's just different yeah. chugging. Yeah. I've never actually asked them if that was intentional, but I've always, I've always heard it and thought, oh, it just sounds like, oh, because, because if you think about it, obnoxious also starts, or no, the, fe the fear also starts with the same part <laughs> from yeah. the beginning of Moschenstein. <laughs> 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 they should just start doing that in every album. Yeah. yeah you know what? That's it. My band Sage is gonna start this every album with the same riff. <laughs> you you just played another show last night. I totally forgot about that. I meant to ask you about that. Sorry guys, we, we're now we going did. to deviate from what we're talking about. We we did. It was it was good fun. Uh, and you know, it, no no show is free of mistakes. But we had a we had a fun one last night where we played Children of the Grave. Uh, oh, nice. you, know, was, you know, Black Sabbath cover. Mm -hmm. uh, we have originals too. We're not we're not just a cover band, but we we throw a few in there to please the pub crowd but in the third verse where uh you know the aussie goes you know uh so you children of tomorrow listen what i say but then our singer forgot the fucking words <laughs> and so it was like listen what i say 
Shit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Nothing is what I say. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but that's, yeah. Oh, that's great. Oh, how many how many shows is that? that you've played? Well, we've uh we've played four now. Uh three in a pub setting and one at a at a music festival. So Sweet. uh yeah, yeah, it's good good fun. It's nice to finally you know, because we formed during the pandemic, so it's mm-hmm. nice to finally get out and play shows again. Uh, yeah, but it's it's really coming together now. Sweet. Um, yeah, get getting the new bass player up to speed, uh, picking it up real quick. You know, we've got a twenty song set list at this. So point, wait, so, so wait, a new bass player as of as of how how new? Uh, last couple last couple months. So okay, um, okay. This this gig and the last gig we played before that. Uh, so because so, yeah. I did because I did I did see a picture that the venue posted of you guys yesterday, and I yeah. did notice. I'm like, one of those guys looks a little more. He's a long hair. Yeah, yeah. And I'm, that's I, that, I'm into that's that. Ollie, that's the new guy. Yeah, and his name's Ollie. That's a killer name too. Yeah, yeah. That, All right, that, just that, gotta, I, got got to get the other guy to grow his shit out, and then you guys are ready to go. Stardom it, awaits. See, that's that's the thing. When we when we first started, uh, you know, we'd we'd known each other, and he had long hair as well, <laughs> and that's how we kind of met. He's like, "Do you like metal? Fuck yeah! You a drummer? Yeah, we're do- we're doing this." So it's like, yeah, cool. But then, like, some time passed. Uh, uni kind of got in the way. Uh, but then he turns up after we agree to meet up again. He buzzed his hair off, and I was like, "Dude, no, <laughs> no." No, so now he's kind of playing catch up again. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, it's yeah. it's it's such a weird thing, but at least we agree on it. Where sometimes we see bands and we're like, ah, I'd, t- I'd take you so much more seriously if you just grew your hair out. Jeez, <laughs> get a mane going, man. It doesn't even have to be that long. Just like shoulder length. <laughs> anyway, yeah. I, yeah it's, but now, but now, well, go ahead. I, I was just gonna say it's just a, a bit of light hearted fun. But if if you if you do have a main going on, I I do I do feel a bit more of a kinship where I'm like, eh, it's 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 okay, it's okay to have long hair. <laughs> but then we're but then we're but then we're, we're we're getting back onto talking about Age of Entitlement, where yes. that that version of Acid Rain, nobody except the drummer has long hair. <laughs> yeah, which you know, it's but, it's but you get older, and sometimes that the hair doesn't actually work this way. Like I know I, there are people my age that I went to like high school with. And I'm about to be 45, and I'll see pictures of them on the internet, and I'll be like, "Oh, they're bald, and their their hair is all thinned out." And so I just like thank my lucky stars that like I can actually still have this hair. So I was gonna, I, get, I, was gonna I get say, it. I got I got a pretty mad forehead game going on. Like I'm kind of hoping that it doesn't recede any further. But uh, all that- all all you do at that point is you just wear a do rag or a baseball cap and just keep the rest of it long and then that's your look from now on just just brett michaels it just permanently walk around with it <laughs> i saw I, I i swear to god i saw a picture of him recently without anything on his head and he still had all the hair and i went oh my god it actually is real because i thought it was just like a <laughs> i thought it was a cap that he had the hat the hair attached to it and he just went, boop, and yeah. he went out on stage but apparently he, he really has the hair so uh nice good for him commitment yeah <laughs> speaking of poison acid rain <laughs> yeah. yeah talking about gl- the glamest of glam on the thrashest of thrash yeah um but yeah so where are we at new new age narcissist sorry hashtag new age narcissist uh i love that you know everybody wants to be me section they yeah. fucking nailed it on the social commentary you know that that's something they always they always did you know they always had like an element of like observations of of people and um, and i mean yeah that that's a, that's probably a good time to to touch on one of my biggest annoyances when it comes to acid rain and that's that so many people even people that know the band and claim to be a fan of the band will make yeah. the claim that their songs are jo- are jokey songs yeah or the lyrics. <laughs> re- the, re- remember when the nibbles will strike? <laughs> well, that you know? I mean, yeah. So I, I think yeah. that's what it is: is that they hear yeah. this one was a blip at the beginning of the album, or at the end of Obnoxious, where all of a sudden it's like a funky part 
And yeah. then that really sped now up this chip monkey thing. Is serious. <laughs> or that, or yeah, or that that yeah. part. And they just they just immediately take that and the fact that they seem like lighthearted individuals, and then they make that yeah. the band's discography. Like I literally saw a video where a guy was was talking about Age of Entitlement. He's like, it's good to see that he stopped writing all the jokey lyrics. And I'm like, he never wrote jokey lyrics. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> like, like there's no. It's so it's you know it, it's just so annoying. But that is a that right there is a great example of most people that go on the internet to talk about music. They literally know a little bit about it, and yeah. then they have a big bunch of assumptions, and then they present videos where they're apparently talking about facts, and yeah. I'm just like, it just annoys the the fuck out of me, and it's Cause, just. Cause- they're not a they're not a comedy band, you know. No, they have they have the odd you know lighthearted moment where like, I mean to be to be honest, if you're gonna point to anything being kind of jokey, is they've got a lot of like bonus tracks and stuff elsewhere where they've got like uh, a recording of an argument just stuck on uh, an EP, yeah. or they've yeah. got um you know they've got a cover of the Magic Roundabout theme song, you know, and you know. What? And their their stage persona, like if you watch yeah. footage of them, especially back in the day, it was very lighthearted and there were jokes and stuff. And then, you know, Kev always had his hair up in some weird, funky way. Yeah. Um, so it makes sense that that people would make the assumption, but I, I just my problem is is if you're going to go out and start talking about a band maybe know what you're talking about first, but that's me addressing yeah. 99% of all people on the internet because <laughs> yeah. that's what it's so frustrating being somebody like me where I'm like, I, I never want to go out and make a video about something that I don't know anything about or yeah. say things that I don't know. And most people don't care. They just spout off bullshit all the fucking time. Anyway, acid rain, not a joke band in case you were confused they yep. are just, uh, they have a good sense of humor, a la Anthrax, or honestly, any band that's worth a damn, you could, yeah. you can find evidence of them being fun people. Yes, you know? for sure. Um, so yeah, my, my piece of hell, uh, the oh, guitar manese. That's one of my, one of song. my two, probably one of my two favorites on the album is my piece of hell. Yeah. When awesome. it makes that it makes that transition into the stomp the, the chorus where it's like that stomping beat is a ha da, da. Yeah. like that whole part I'm just like that's just fucking great because it's yeah. the kind of chorus that like people don't people don't write that kind of chorus all the time nah. and so I love hearing that I love hearing you know in in metal albums because I mean that's how I've always felt the me- the metal albums where there's sections that surprise me like oh it's not just the riff I expected and the vocal pattern I expected that's uh, that's what I enjoy, and that's why this album fucking rules. Because there's a lot of that on here. Yeah, and the, there's a cool uh, cover of "Blood Makes Noise." You know, it's fun Suzanne Vega cover reminds me. It's kind of in a similar vein of their cover of "Hanging on the Telephone," uh, yeah, which is a, a Blondie cover. Uh, have you have you heard but, the original of "Blood Makes Noise"? Because it just sounds nothing like yeah, this. Yeah, it's yeah. it's totally different. Yeah. Which, Which is I, how how you should do it, really? It, exactly. I I bring something told, new because I when they when I knew that they were doing it, and I hadn't heard it yet. I was just like, "Oh man, this is well, how is this going to sound?" And then they just made it sort of a thrashy punky version of it, which is fun as hell. Yeah. Uh, sense of independence. Love me some groove. The grooves on this, damn dude. When when they hit, chef's kiss. Yeah, hardship once again, just more groovage. Uh, Within the woods. Now this is the album's most sprawling track. You yeah, know, that's that's the thing as well. They've got a lot of very long songs, but they yeah. always make them count. You know, absolutely. There's a lot of weird changes, interesting parts. Um, oh, and the growly kind of vocals thrown in there were an unexpected, but like welcome development on their sound. It's like, oh. 30 years on there's something new you know yeah. that it's really cool uh that, yeah that, our, that that's probably my favorite uh because it's a big ass epic song and it just pays off in every way possible you know that sure. with the time with the time that you spend with it uh which one is it R- ripped apart uh 
you know, here's here's the thing. Despite their technical proficiency, there's a lot of punky energy running through this band's veins. This yeah. is like this is like if you took like the nuttiest punk band you could find, but gave them like music degrees. <laughs> you know, <laughs> this is it's it's a really cool melding of two seemingly opposing aesthetics mm-hmm. they just they just nail it so well um and you know this it's such a such a thrash title united hates one last thrash blast to close out on yeah um yeah honestly i don't have anything bad to say i mean this is just this is simply down here because i like the two above it a little more but it's fucking killer as far as modern thrash goes there's nothing quite like a classic band coming back decades down the line and showing people how it's done yeah yeah absolutely agree but that is not my number three uh my number three is the 1989 album the fear which um is a fucking classic Mm-hmm. And a big step forward for the band in all areas. Songwriting, performances, production, everything is just stepped up, you know, a big step. And honestly, this album to me, it stands up with all of the classic thrash from the late 80s. And yeah, it's it's an under, I feel like it's an underappreciated, you know, you see a lot of people that that still do those like YouTube compilations of, the best thrash of the eighties and they don't mention this album. And I'm just like, I'd, I, I, pro- I would mention this album before any overkill album, <laughs> or, you know, <laughs> you suggest, but that's just me. That's just, you know, that may, may be sacrilegious to some people, but I, that's, that's how I feel. Um, and I feel like from this point, like they, they started to, they fucked with it a little bit on Moshkenstein, but with the fear the more the longer and kind of more complex songs they got better at doing them and to be fair like i don't think they get credit for how complex some of their songs were if you really mm-hmm. think about it like i sometimes oh, yeah. put myself in the mindset of like if i was joining this band as a new guitar player and i had to learn some of these i'd be like where do you even I'd, fucking start <laughs> i'd shit myself dude like especially considering the length of some of these songs yeah i mean the, there's so much to remember yeah and yeah and i just and i just think it was that grouping of musicians at the time which i th- so if i if i if i remember right obviously if howard's watching this he can correct me on this because on the on the fear it's got different members listed than on moshkenstein but i think that at least gaz still played guitar on this album and then they just gave credit to the new guy or something. I'm not, I might be wrong, but I feel like it was a situation where they recorded it and then the lineup change happened. But anyway, so I feel like it has a little bit in common with the style of Moshkenstein just done in a better way. Um, yeah. And this one has version one of human Noia, which is not my favorite version of human Noia. I prefer the single version of Human Noi re-recorded with the next lineup. Mm. Uh, but it's still a great song. And this album is still a little bit rough around the edges, but I think that's kind of a quality that that I that I like about it because the guitars are in tune and um, <laughs> still feels a little bit like I go, it could go off the rails at some points, but in a really fun way. And it's just got like... Like, honestly, that's, a you know, the it's got all their stuff has has the riffs, the big riffs where a riff will happen and you'll, and you'll make, you know, the riff face or whatever. Yeah. Or the, the Robert De Niro impression or whatever. Um, yeah. <laughs> but uh, well, you play into me. <laughs> but like I said earlier, like a big thing that drew me to this band originally was Howard's vocals and and his lyrics, because he, there were parts in the songs because there are plenty of bands where like I really like what they do, but I'll go years without ever actually going and looking at the lyrics. Whereas mm-hmm. with Acid Rain, there were little parts, because sometimes he's, he says things really quick. 
Yeah. And I'm all like, that sounds cool as fuck. What the fuck is he saying? Um, and like, <laughs> yeah. and like, so this was like, you know, I had to go and find out what I was saying. Cause like, you know, a good example is on the song, all I see, which is probably one of my favorites, you know, the, the, everyone chants, you know, in nothing we trust. And he says, uh, pass up because I've never taught a lesson. Just like the way that he says that line. I was just yeah. like that fucking rules. And so I mean, it made me go to like, see like what all the words were because there's plenty of little little parts like that where he sometimes it'll be so quick that i'm already really bad at deciphering words for some reason a lot of times i'm you know i've gotten so many lyrics wrong and then read them later and been like oh i was singing the fucking wrong thing the whole time but honestly um, that was that was my face when i found out what mike Patton is saying in midlife crisis like you know there's so many little things in there like that i realized i was saying horribly wrong but that's yeah. a good that's a good example though because that's an album Angel Dust is an album where I heard it and then immediately read the lyrics along with it on my second listen because I was just yeah. like I, I yeah. it's, it sounds like cool shit. But um yeah. Uh the Fear's a great album. The the there's there's you know a lot of fast thrashiness if you're into that. There's a little bit of a progressive quality, a technical quality. There's longer songs, but all the long songs definitely give you your time's worth. And uh, overall, I would I think that The Fear is an underrated thrash classic. But in my opinion, they would make an even more underrated thrash classic after this. And so yeah. that's why The Fear is at number three. On well, to number two. Is- Good news is I can jump directly off of that because the fear is my number two. Sweet. So uh, without further ado, is that the first time we've said that this episode? I don't know. I say it so much now that I've lost track. Well, I, almost, I, I almost feel like I wake up in the morning now, my alarm goes off and I go, without further ado, I'm going to get up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I feel like I haven't said it this episode. That's, that's weird. It's like, a, like an anti-deja vu thing. Um, but with now that, we've completely derailed ourselves. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and all that is is more ado. There's just more yeah. ado happening everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, the, that's the most botched segue I think I've ever had on this show. Oh yeah, uh, the fear. Yes, uh, the fear of continuing with what I'm saying. Uh, <laughs> so uh, you never know when the when nipples the will strike. strike. Belk. <laughs> <laughs> Which apparently that was a commercial. Obviously not over here in yeah. America, but yeah, it's it's a it's an old old advert, as we'd say in this country. Mm. Um, yeah, how does that, how does that? It's a shorter word, but somehow sounds fancier. <laughs> it's I think it's the, yeah, I think it's the lack of lack of the T on the end. Advert, advert. Yeah, yeah, keeps yeah. you hanging there, begging for more. <laughs> uh so yeah it's this uh like it's here's the thing it's a fake out opening joke track to an otherwise very serious thrash album you know yeah um but you know it, it, people latch on to dumb shit and project like they know what they're talking about when in actual fact they're just a bunch of dinguses um but yeah well said yeah uh so reflection of truths Right off the bat, production is a major step up from Moshkinstein. Everything sounds better sonically, uh, but I particularly love the midsection with the nutty evil guitar in this song. Like, like, yeah. Who thought to do that? But it works so incredibly well. Yeah, that, well, that's that's part of what I was saying about their early stuff about how it's got this. It's a there's a it's a progressive or experimental quality, but it's it's almost like by a, a by the outcasts of the experimental crowd. Like there, yeah. you know, there are people that went down <laughs> one route where things kind of made sense and they went these different directions. Where I feel like what they did was pushing boundaries in ways that they didn't even really quite know what they, what, yeah. what they were doing. So there would be little, there's a lot of our odd guitar parts that I go, I, I wouldn't have written that, but that sounds fucking fantastic. It gives me um, like Trace Bruins, Mr. Bungle vibes. Yeah. A lot of the times when, when acid rain go off on a weird thing, I, th- I get a bit of a bungle vibe. Um, 
you know, which is, you know, funny because at the time Bungle only had demo tapes out. Yeah. So, you know, the, these guys are just, they're on, they're on a higher plane of existence. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> insane ecstasy. Like you can tell how tight they got as a unit. Like, holy shit. Some of this is like an athletics tryout. Some of these parts, I just think, Jesus Christ. Um, Human Oil, love this song. Should mm. have been bigger, super catchy. Uh, the Fear is a sprawling title track, badass stuff. Uh, Blind Aggression, Blind Aggression. I like, yeah. I, I love that. Uh, I love the gang too. shouts. Um, Life informs more awesome thrashing. All I see, even more awesome thrashing. Mm -hmm. Lost in solitude, evil as fuck. Chugging closing track, like. Honestly, it is one of those horrendously unappreciated thrash classics. Like yeah. it needs, it needs more recognition than it gets. Ab uh, absolutely. Uh, that is the th the fear and my thoughts on the fear. Uh, so I'm gonna hand it back over to you for your number two. Sweet. Yeah, I mean that my, that my the whole you know it's been my it's been one of my uh, goals. I have I have a, I have a few goals that have carried on for a very long time on my channel. And one of them is, is talking about acid ring. Cause I feel like they don't get talked about enough um, among my other ones, like pointing out that um, St. Anger is a really good album. <laughs> <laughs> I, it's, I, I'm sure, I'm sure, I'm sure some of them, some members of acid ring would be like, do you have to put those two so close together? But it's true. <laughs> They're both things that I feel need, need to happen. And anyway, so Steve, we're Steve. It's fine. It's fine. It's just, yeah, it's the same. We uh, it's the we side. did we did a uh, we did a little crisscross. So we, we are going to have the same number one. But my number two is the Age of Entitlement from 2019, yeah. which was released 29 years after Obnoxious, and it was so it's the rebooted lineup. And I, it, because I think originally there was kind of talk of their trying to be like a, a legit reunion, but yeah, I think some members didn't want to do it. Some couldn't do it. And then eventually it ended up where everyone had pulled out except for Howard. And then he's just like, well, shit, you know, we'll just get a new lineup. And, and so um, the lineup on here, like fucking great. Uh, it's the since then Paul Chanter is not no longer in the band and they got a new second guitar player who uh who at least now I think he has long dreadlocks that's kind of a that's a <laughs> step up in the hair game it checks but, out <laughs> yeah it works um which I've which I've always I've always hated like white dudes with dreadlocks here's <laughs> here's my here's my hypocrisy over here in America I'm all like get rid of that shit that's fucking horrible but for some reason if you're from england <laughs> i'm just like <laughs> i'm okay with that and i don't know yeah. why i don't know why all of a sudden it's okay it's just uh one of those weird things i'm never going to try to figure out i just feel that way i should anyway. move to the u.s i could get away with anything <laughs> <laughs> oh that's step back guys he's british oh Terribly sorry. <laughs> you, you're not even fucking lying because years and year, years ago, I, this is probably almost 20 years ago now, that um, I had a, a good friend that I kind of palled around with and went drinking with, and he was British, and he looked kind of like a better-looking Chris Martin from Coldplay. Like, mm -hmm. he had the really the shaved head, very chiseled features, and very, very British-sounding when he talked. Ooh. And we would just go to bars and... It would always it would, it would always be a given that at some point he was just going to disappear and go home with a woman. It was like, <laughs> and I wouldn't even know. I would just be, we would just be at a bar and there'd be other people. I'm talking and I'm just like, well, where do you, where do you fucking go? Oh, oh I guess he's. <laughs> we, but we knew he we knew he'd be fine and he'd be waking up with some random woman and then he'd find his way home. And that was <laughs> that was the life of the British guy in uh, in America. <laughs> wow. Get, get me a plane ticket, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, you show you show up now with the, with the with your Eddie Munson kind of vibe going on, and then that comes out of your mouth. You, it's you yeah. know you're, they're going to be lining up. You might as well just go ahead and eighty six, baby. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> 
anyway, age of entitlement. Woo. Yes. Um, mm. So yeah, this uh, the the lineup on here is great. All the, and they did because um, when we you know, I got into the band and then shortly after they announced this reboot and they did two one off songs. Twenty fifteen yes. they did Plan of the Damned and then twenty seventeen they did the the man who became himself, which are both great songs. But I was all I was always just like, well, I mean, is this a single for an album? Where's the goddamn album? And then eventually <laughs> in twenty nineteen we got the album. Which ended up being my number one album of 2019 in my uh, top 10 albums of the year. And it's just because, to me, it's just exactly how a a band should come back. There are a handful of really great comeback albums. And unfortunately, there's a, a an alarmingly large number of ones that are completely underwhelming Mostly because I think a lot of bands just tried to recreate shit that they had already done before. Yeah. And the great thing about Age of Entitlement is that it feels like modern Acid Rain and not a rehashed Acid Rain. They and they're on, embracing who they are now as opposed yeah. to trying to it's rekindle. like Yeah, they're not trying to hide that they are a different lineup. So it's you know if if it's so it's it, and it works out. And, but but it also works out because those musicians it creates a more focused version of Acid Rain where the off the rails thing is no longer there, which is fine with me because I like leaving that as a characteristic of like their early stuff. And I just really, every, every, but I'm talking, I'm referring to like everybody because even Howard is a better singer now than he was. Yeah. Some people would say for a band member, your prime is early 20s late teens early 20s maybe mid 20s if you're pushing it but uh i feel like he's just become so much more he controls his voice a lot better and i think he's he's a lot more serious about being a vocalist now where he he does things like practice and warm ups and things like that and yeah. um i guess when you get older that's kind of that's a thing that you just you got to start doing it anyway but it ends up you know making for a really great vocal performance all the way through this album for the shouty parts and the singy parts are all all better and overall this is just an album full of great songwriting great performances great production great variety of songs there's not it's not like the same note over and over again and um really like i, I would probably say that the the old the only thing that I miss from this version is that bit of odd progression where you, because there, there are qualities now that are a little technical and a little progressive, but not in that sort of batshit crazy. Holy shit, <laughs> where did that come from? Yeah. Yeah. So, but it makes sense because they're a different band. They're more, there are different guys. They're ma more mature now. So it makes sense. So, I wouldn't want it if they just tried to throw in some funky parts or whatever, because it wouldn't, it would feel forced. So I almost feel like yeah. even though that's something that I miss, I feel like them not going down that route actually did them a service and made this a stronger album. And I just think that it's an incredibly well-made album. And it, you know, I, I think I probably said this in my review of it at the time. It, it makes even like the young thrash bands seem pretty fucking dull in comparison because there's, there's a, there's an attention to like songwriting that I feel like so much metal just doesn't have anymore. There's, yeah. there's a lot of metal that their, their number one goal is being fast and aggressive, you know, having some some ripping solos or, or, or and uh, aggressive vocals but then when you if you take all of those elements away and you're like well what is the, what is the song actually <clears throat> there's not very much there and so mm -hmm. that's why so much modern metal just sort of it just goes right over my head and I go look it's fine but I'm not going to go listen to that again because once you get past the surface level of it's fast it's aggressive there's nothing else for me to sink my teeth into and age of entitlement has all those things Fast, aggressive, great songwriting, blah, blah, blah. It's a great album. Uh, but it's, to me, it's not their best. And so that's why it's my number two. Which brings us to our joint number one Acid we Rain go. album. We, we, we meet again. 
Um, so yeah, this this to me is is the is the you know peak of that original run. You yeah. know, it's like everything they've done so far has led to this, and this is their most, I think, bold, creative album. Yeah. Um, you know, which fu- funnily enough, the first track is called Creative Restraint. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, I, I love me some mid-tempo grooving thrash. Excellent opener. Um, Joke Chain is this progged out pounder. Love that weird little melodic bit in the middle. Like, do 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 like all, of, all the little bits going like yeah they meet up and they go off on little tangents and stuff but uh and, and i love the upbeat mosh riffage in the second half uh thoughtful sleep just sprawling oh, shit thrashy non-ballad yeah it's so good yeah um uh, there's there's lots of cool parts in this and i also love that it leads straight into the following track absolutely you are your enemy uh, which you know essentially turns that not only from uh, a seven-minute song, but into like a ten-minute continuous thing. Yeah. Um, I mean, you are your enemy. However, is just this blasting two and a half minute assault. Um, Phantasm absolutely adore the synth and like orchestral hits in the intro. Yeah. Like, like the the tasteful power chord symbol chokes as well. Like da 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 Love it. Yeah. Um, it, this is one of the um, album's longest tracks, you know, at, a, approaching the 10 minute mark. Um, but there's a filthy riff about halfway in around the four minute kind of zone. Uh, I mean, this, this is what a 10 minute roughly nine, 10 minute song should be mm-hmm. interesting at every turn. Yeah. Um, so many different parts. Uh, my open mind howard's now here's the thing howard's vocals have a uniquely british delivery while Mm. retaining a grit that you need to deliver thrash with conviction you know there's more killer riffage on this one as well but i just love the want to be my open mind stuff going on there um codes of conformity that the the other very long song on this record you know yeah that being said it's one of those that doesn't feel long because it's so entertaining especially that funk jam at the end when i first (laughs) when i first heard this album i was already completely sold and at the end when i heard the funk jam part i was like they didn't have to do that and i just love it even more now and um you know it, it closes out with this is serious (laughs) <laughs> like I, I, lo- I love a i love a band with a sense of humor see that yeah. and in a way that kind of worked to their detriment in a way because people mistake them for a, for this comedy act which they're not you know yeah. they i get the, the the album cover didn't help either although i really like the album cover a lot but um, yeah it, it, the weird thing is it wasn't their original album cover and to I've seen the original album cover, and to be completely honest, this one's much better. <laughs> but really, it was a draw- it was like a drawing. It was, it, and it's it's one of those things where I go, well, this is fine, but it seems like it'd be better for a t shirt and not an album cover. But to be honest, both of these, you know, the Fear and Moshkinstein both have album covers that I go, what the fuck is going on here? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and uh, it's co- but it's cool though. Like it, in a way, they they reflect the album's vibes. I, I yeah, think- you're right. You're actually right. Yeah. Yeah, but I think obnoxious is is a is a major um, step up again. Like, say so you've got Moshkinstein, they're almost there. The fear they've hit their stride, and obnoxious is the is the opus where yeah. it's like this is what we're capable of. Um, and you know, and which makes it. I was gonna say, I, f- I feel like they had more ground to cover too, because if if you listen to on the worst of acid rain, there's there's recordings for what we're going to be, I believe, an EP called Jokes on Us. And yeah, those are it's it's interesting because it's almost like they're not long songs, but they they started in 
you can tell that they have these different ideas of what they're trying to incorporate into the music. And it's, it's, if they, if they had, cause I, I believe from what I've, from what I know, they brought the demos or recordings of what's supposed to be their next EP. And I think the record label was like, nah. <laughs> and then the band kind of fizzled out. Um, but, uh, but I feel like if they, you know, had been supported and, and, or at least had, you know, the amount of success that they should have had, where they had a really big momentum pushing them along, maybe they could have gotten another album out of that. And I feel like it would have pushed the envelope even further in in a different yeah. way, probably an even more unexpected way. But, which makes, yeah, which, which makes this album like all the more bittersweet because it's like, damn dude did they have another one of these up their sleeves you know yeah that was gonna go even further but yeah it it's amazing i love it yeah it's i agree of, it's it, it's become one of my favorite thrash albums and I, it's same same here um yeah. our, jo our joint number one yeah it is it is one of my favorite thrash albums and i i, I think I, I feel like i've talked about this album a lot on my channel but i i absolutely love it I love the fact that it's it's progressive thrash in the most unpretentious way. Yes. And also it's technical in an almost effortless way. Like it just sort of feels like a band that's got their shit together. But at the same time, they're not just resting on doing the same old songs and they're really trying to push the boundaries of like what they can accomplish in one song, all of them. Yeah. And, and I love the, the, when you take everything about it, the sound, the production, the, the long songs, the, the sort of tight performances to me, this is their injustice for all. Yeah. It has qualities. And I, there are a lot of bands around 1990 that did that kind of album. And I love that. I love Whatever it is, it's just thrash bands going, um, we can do more with this stuff. And then yeah. they do. I call it we the all... post-justice era. Yeah. We, yeah. We, we all were rewarded with all this great shit. But at the same time, it's a little bit depressing nowadays because albums like this, like nobody does anything like this. And obviously mm -hmm. it'd be hard to recreate how great this is, but you don't hear technical progressive thrash unless it goes way too far on the progressive side of things or way too far on the technical side of things it, to where it's barely thrash anymore. And, yeah. but no, nobody does it. Everything it's like, and I, I'm hoping that maybe one day we'll get to that. But there are so many bands that are just like, yeah, we're a thrash band. And then their stuff is just so basic bitch thrash metal <laughs> with lyrics about being in a thrash band or pizza yeah. or whatever. Beer, pizza. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And, and gang vocals put in their appropriate places. And it's just like a fucking template. And and you'd think that I'd love that because I love both beer and pizza and thrash. So you'd think that I'd be one hundred percent all about that. But that's Act not my like favorite. You've been shit. there before, <laughs> you know. But these people, these dudes haven't. These young dudes haven't. And then you, and then yeah. because of that, because overall younger thrash fans and thrash thrash bands, they want everything to be the first Exodus album all the time. <laughs> when bands get back together, or or older bands continue, they just trot out the same old bullshit over and over again because the fans fucking eat it up. And there's me left on the sidelines. Yeah. Like I remember the first, that sweet spot of the first, I don't know, five, six, seven years of me discovering music, the late eighties and the early nineties, where everything I found was pushing things one bit further. And then when a yeah. band would put out another album, I knew that they were going to give me something that I hadn't heard from them already. And music was just amazing everywhere you went. You know, it's like the, you, you could get, it was just so many different flavors. And now there are still different flavors, but it's almost like they've all been honed down to this one particular thing to where it's, yeah. and if there are, 
deviations. It's always deviations in a I don't I don't quite understand because there's that that you know uh metal core and uh and you know uh, melodic death metal and all there's all these like different things where I go yeah. maybe that maybe that's what killed it trying to name everything and so yeah, if you name yeah. everything and you have everything pigeonholed into a specific subgenre then now that band can't go beyond that subgenre anymore yeah it's it's so. like it, it it's almost like if you took a look at the big four and went well Metallica is chug chug yeah yeah thrash and uh, Megadeth is uh, thrash, and, uh, <laughs> and, and 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 Anthrax is look at me, I'm walking here, thrash, uh, and and Slayer is I'm really evil and I'm really fast, thrash, and then it's like you you might as well just name the fucking genres, the bands at that point, because if you're getting that specific with it, like what's the point? Yeah, you know. But I, but I think I think that's a big reason why there's there there are a lot of arguments why obviously Metallica gets a lot of hate, but on top of that, people will say Anthrax doesn't belong in the big four, and I yeah. and I I guarantee fucking to you their biggest gripe is that they did different things with their sound, yeah. And so they don't belong in there with Slayer because Slayer did the same shit over and over again, and which is comparatively speaking, they did, but yeah. they still had their own trajectory up to a certain point as well, but. Mm-hmm. I, but yeah, anyway, it's just one of those arguments that I, I don't think I, I don't think in my lifetime it's going to get any better. I think there are going to be bands that pop up and I'm going to be the champion of those bands because there are bands that have like, you know, la- last year, the the band Cryptosis, their, their fucking album. I love it. And I love that it's progressive and technical, but thrash as fuck all the way through. But it's an album that like the 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 audience for that album was way too small especially over here in the states and it's because for the most part metal fans that's not that's not doesn't fit into the bubble that they're wanting it to be fitting into and so that's what we get anyway speaking of not fitting in a bubble obnoxious uh my number one album i was already talking about it but um this is just like a huge step up from the fear in every way so like they took the, it's just the progression is there I yes. don't understand. Even on their Wikipedia page, it says that um, it came out to mostly negative reviews. And I'm like, really? Were people that fucking dumb back in 1990? And, and just, you know, because I'm just like, you motherfuckers you... didn't know what you had. You know? how, how did you how did you not hear this and think this was fucking amazing? And I I don't know who who knows. But the the this was you know, since the first time I heard this album, it's been my favorite Acid Rain album and yeah i do feel like they would have been been a band that continued to to progress in a really interesting way but you know but the the way that things played out i'm actually very happy with the way this played out as well because i like the version of the band that's going now and i'm really they're they're writing new material as we speak and i am looking forward to hearing whatever that's going to be because once again there's another lineup change so i'm hoping that we'll also get another slightly different flavor of acid rain which would be fun but um yeah so many great moments on this album thoughtful sleep you already brought it up is one of those huge epic songs that i'm just i love how it's written and i like you said i love how it goes into you are your enemy and then i love h's really aggressive vocals on the choruses of you are your enemy yeah. and um that's a great section of the album right there but um yeah and then you know those songs that are like nine minutes long, 10 minutes long or whatever, like there's not a wasted second of them. It's just thoroughly enjoyable all the way through. And Hell yeah. I don't really have much more to add from what, from what you were, you were saying. It's just, you know, it stands up like there's so much great metal that came out 89, 90, 91. And yes. To me, obnoxious is at the top of the pile with all of that stuff, and I, it, you know, it's one of those things. In hindsight, you know, who knows why it didn't get a very good reception at the time? But it would make sense that I also really like the album cover, and people apparently say it's one of the worst album covers. I'm like, oh, 
Well, maybe, maybe that's the problem. <laughs> maybe yeah. I'm, maybe Sorry, I'm like unique equals bad. Like, yeah, yeah. I think that, that I feel that it's another one of those reasons why I always feel like I'm on the fringes uh, of, of metal. Yeah. And because like my opinion always seems to be slightly askew of the norm, but whatever. I feel like that's what makes acid rain a great band is I feel like they are slightly askew of the norm while still being a kick-ass thrash band. Yeah. So um so yeah, obnoxious our joint number 1 acid rain album. Indeed. I had to, I had to, I had to, to hydrate real quick before we do our our uh for the last time of 2022 whenever we finish a band, 3 mm-hmm. 2 1. Yeah! Yeah! We did it. We did it. Nice. Yeah. And um there you go, man. Acid Rain, uh, fully ranked peanut butter platypus to those of you who are uh, here with us and have been with us for, man, we are approaching, are we approaching three years of this? Yep, three-year so, mark. We we started in 2020. So. In, in, in June, right? Like once we get to, I believe it's May or June where we, when yeah. we started. What, uh, what's the plan for the, for the anniversary? Like we just gonna we gonna do a big old live stream or are we gonna do a sure we'll do yeah. something yeah. yeah I figure yeah we have to because we we if you hit, like how how many things have you done in your life consistently for three years aside from breathing and eating and sleeping <laughs> I was gonna say a cover band but uh, but a pandemic put an end to that so oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we'll definitely do that but it's yeah. you know. T- but we, we still got one more episode for 2022 and it's going to be um, a bit of a different thing, but also fun. Yeah. And um, where we catch up with a, with a few old, old friends of, of, of previous episodes. Yeah. And yeah. Um, I don't really know how to end this. What is episode. this? A crossover episode? <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I, I, I love Hi. Bojack Horseman. I just wanted to say that. <laughs> oh, Bo- Bojack Horseman. I've never seen that. Is that good? Is that a good show? It's funny. Yeah. But it's also, it's one of those shows where once you get invested, like it looks goofy on the surface and it, it has humor in it. Mm-hmm. But it's one of those that you get kind of emotionally invested in. And then you're like, interesting. When, when something sad happens in it, you're like, oh, man, dude. Damn, dude. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. So yeah, Acid Rain, Bojack Horseman, you know, there's some sort of yeah. there's some sort of <laughs> relationship there, I, I guess. <laughs> anyway, the, I don't know why this one feels hard to end. I don't know uh I, I don't know where to go with it, but you know, as usual, we uh we just thank you for listening and for watching. I haven't said that in a while cuz I haven't been doing uh <laughs> Old Headbangers Ball. But for those of you who are listening to this, there is a special had old headbangers ball episode coming um as a christmas present and um that's all i'm gonna say about it because it's not it's not it's probably not what you think but it's uh it's a a little little gift for me to the audience but uh very nice you heard it here first so (laughs) um yeah that's it for this episode of cranked and ranked if you are new to acid rain just go listen to all of it because it's four albums and then there's other random shit you can listen to also. But uh, yeah, you could binge the, the, it in an afternoon. Like, you absolutely, you abs- yeah, you absolutely could. And, um, and also it, it, you, you can go watch the other show I do called old bollocks, which we have an episode coming out. Oh fuck. It's come when, so I, I totally forgot. This is going to be acid rain week on my channel because Monday is the new episode of old bollocks. And then Wednesday is our acid rain ranking. Nice. So, um, Acid Rain Week on the Old Head Channel. So thank you for being here for Acid Rain Week. Thank you for watching Cranked and Ranked. We appreciate it. And as usual, I'm going to throw it over to Mr. Eddie Sparks to take us out. You never know when the laters will dude. I tried to come up with something clever. <laughs> it, it's all right. It's odd. It's odd enough. <laughs> to uh to to get us out of here. All right. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>